So um, the Hampton Roads area of Virginia has the Norfolk Naval Base, which is the largest naval base in the, in the world. Um, and so military masculinity informs uh, <laughs> the permissions of masculinity in that area in a very um, structured, dogmatic, um, confining way. Um, and so I know that through, in and out. Um, and then when you throw in the fact that I also grew up a mile away from Pat Robertson's Christian Broadcasting Network, um, military masculinity and the expectations of the religious right coupled together in one area produce a really wild and wacky understanding of gender per, uh, performance and presentation. I met a young man who was in his uh, freshman year at actually the same high school that I went to in Virginia Beach who was in ROTC, the um, NGROTC, which is the military preparatory program. And I became really interested in learning how we build the men, how the military sort of creates a structure to build men that will then go right into the, you know, assuming would go right into the military afterwards. And so that's when I met Sherrod, who's the main subject of my piece. Um, and I followed him from his freshman year to his senior year in a project called I Solely Watched Him Disappear, which is a series of videos and photographs. Yeah. And this, pro this piece is from that, you know, larger project. He told me a story about being at a boot camp, a mock boot camp. For, um, for high school students, and all the, the boy, it was all an all boy boot camp, and uh, they were standing at attention, asked to stand for, stand at attention rather, for about uh, 15 or 20 minutes, and they started passing out because they were locking their legs, sure. lost their blood, lost the blood flow, and they passed out. So he said, you know, there's a long history of durational video pra practice. Let's make a durational video of you just standing, holding this this uh, performance, this this salute. So he did that, and it was horrible. It was a, the most boring video I'd ever made. And I apologized and said, you know, sorry for wasting your time. Let's, uh, I'm just going to break down my gear. And as I was breaking down my gear, he, tur he held the salute and turned ever so slightly. And something clicked because I immediately started re um, remembering the um, ballerina in the music box that my sister had on her dresser. And I, having, you know, my, my grandfather was a um, was in the military, and so when my Nana took us uh, or brought us to the base, they would salute our car. And that's where I learned about sort of, and I would go home and, and practice this, but that's where I learned about military masculinity. And so I said, this is like the ballerina, but for men. And so I had him turn 360 degrees and did two takes, one where he was at half body, and then one where it was a close up, so that you could begin to see that all that slight, subtle nuance of him attempting to hold the salute perfectly to some unseen commander.